let us start a new topic balance of payments and exchange rate in this video we'll talk about balance of payments or BOP in short and in the next video we'll look at exchange rate now the definition of balance of payments or BOP this is a summary account of all economic transactions of one country with other countries of the world there are about 220 countries and and there are different types of transactions which take place between one country and different countries in the world so balance of payments in a way summarizes all economic transactions into different sub accounts and this data can be compiled on annual basis i think almost all countries will have them on annual basis some countries will have them on monthly as well as quarterly basis since bop is an account you should know about these three basic accounting principles as they relate to the balance of payments account we will have debit side entry as well as credit side entry into the bop account now debit simply means when you pay money to foreigners and credit will be when you receive money from foreigners so you should know what is debit and what is credit side entry another thing you should know is if credits are greater than debits or you're receiving more money from foreigners relative to what you are paying them you will have a surplus if on the other hand credits are less than debits or you are receiving less money from foreigners relative to what they are paying them what you will have is a deficit and if credits equal debits the account must be in balance the third principle of accounting is in the final analysis when you have summed up all credits and all debits what you must happen is all credits must equal all debits so remember these three principles bop account can be further subdivided into three parts one part is called the current account the second part is called the capital account and the third part is called the official settlement account and we'll look at each of these sub accounts in greater detail now as far as the current account goes this records all transactions relating to trade in goods and services and this current account can be further divided into trade in goods which is also called the merchandise account and trade in services account now let us look at the merchandise account first suppose the u.s exports say wheat to japan and when the u.s exports wheat to japan it receives money from japan and so u.s exports will be recorded as a credit side entry into the u.s bop for japan Japan's BOP, it will be a debit side entry. Why? Because Japan is paying the U.S. money. In a similar vein, when U.S. imports money, it has to pay money to foreigners. And in this case, U.S. imports will be recorded as a debit side entry. Then we have trade and services account. And services include things like tourism, travel, shipping banking insurance finance and and sectors like that so this is trade and services account just as an example look at the tourism industry suppose a german citizen comes to the us and spends money in the us because now us will be receiving money this expenditure by the german tourist will be considered a credit side entry suppose a u.s citizen travels to germany and spends money there now u.s is paying foreigners money and in this case it will be entered as a debit side 
entry. So you should be able to identify credit as well as debit side entries. And remember, current account is made up of two sub accounts, trade in goods or merchandise account and trade in services account. And any of these sub accounts like trade in goods or trade in services can be in surplus, could be in deficit or could have a balance. The second sub account of BOP is the capital account. And this again is made up of two parts, one called investments and the second one called loans. Now, as far as investments go, we are looking at foreign investments. And again, from US perspective, suppose the US decides to invest money in India. In such a case, because US is paying India money, this foreign investment by US in India will be considered a debit side entry into the US balance of payments account. On the other hand, if China invests money in the US, this will be considered a credit side entry into the US capital account. Why? Because now when China invests money, US is receiving money and so a credit side entry. The second part of capital account is the loans. And suppose US gives loan to another country or in other words, US is paying money to another country and so a US loan to another country will be considered a debit side entry and if US receives money or loan from another country this will be considered a credit side entry so once again capital account has two components investments and loans and you should be able to identify debit as well as credit side entries into this sub account the third sub account of BOP is called the official settlement account or in a way, you can consider this the government account. And this is again is made up of two components. One is foreign exchange reserves and two holding of precious metals. Now, different governments around the world hold currencies of other countries. And this total accumulated value of other countries' currencies is called foreign exchange reserves. And this is with the government. In a similar vein, every government around the world will also hold precious metals and precious metals could be gold, silver or platinum. So official settlement account made up of two parts, foreign exchange reserves and precious metals. So we know balance of payments account can be subdivided into three parts, current account, capital account, and official settlement account. And let us suppose or assume that the official settlement account is in balance or in other words, it is non-existence, non-existent. And let us use the following abbreviated terms to represent the following. Let CR represent current account receipt or credit side entry into the current account. And CP represents current account payment or debit side entry into the current account. And then we have KR, which represents capital account receipt and KP, which is capital account payment. And we know in the final analysis, all credits must equal all debits, all, all receipts must equal all payments. So here, CR, plus KR, all receipts, must equal CP plus KP, all receipts. And we can just bring all these payments on to this side, and we can rewrite this. So what you have is CR minus CP plus KR minus KP, and together these two must equal zero. So here I have copied this equation that we had on the previous slide, that is CR minus CP plus KR minus KP must equal zero. Now let us assume that US has a current account deficit of $500 billion. 
when us has a current account deficit what this means is payments must be greater than receipts that's why we have the deficit and by how much is it this is 500 billion dollars so let's just write negative 500 now when you have a deficit of 500 billion dollars and in an accounting sense you want this to equal zero so what this means is kr minus kp must be plus 500 billion dollars or the receipts in the capital account must exceed the payments on the capital account by 500 billion dollars if you have a deficit of 500 billion dollars in your current account now so we need a surplus of 500 billion dollars into the capital account if a country has like the us has a current account deficits now look at the following you want receipts to be greater than payments and what this means is us must be receiving more loans from other countries plus more investments from other countries relative to what it is giving to other countries so when you when you have a current account deficit that means you are not able to pay for your imports based on your export earnings and hence you need to borrow money or let foreign investments come into your country and that's how you can sustain a current account deficit and this is what has been happening to the us over time that is us has had a current account deficit year after year and that has been financed by a capital account surplus and us is not the only one other countries around the world also face similar situation suppose india in a particular year has a current account deficit of 100 billion dollars so what it needs is a capital account surplus of 100 billion dollars to offset this deficit but then suppose india is in deep economic crisis and this happened to india around 91 92 and when you are in deep economic crisis your credit ratings go down and when your credit ratings go down foreign foreigners may not be interested in investing in your country plus may be reluctant to give out loans and this is what happened to india so it had a deficit of 100 billion dollars in the current account and it had to pay foreigners because this is the amount that it owed to other countries and there was no offsetting capital account surplus in such a case the official settlement account comes into play the first strategy for the government is to run down your holding of foreign currencies or foreign exchange reserves and india did this but this was not enough for india to finance this hundred billion dollars of current account deficit the second strategy for the government is to reduce holding of precious metals and this is what india did around 91 92 it physically airlifted five tons of gold sold them in the london market and that's how it was able to finance current account deficit so you should know these issues number first thing you should know is what is balance of payments and in what parts is balance of payments divided into and then look at the consequences of having a deficit in the current account so this completes our discussion of balance of payments thank you for your time